So question two then from the 2016 advanced higher mathematics of mechanics. There we go, statics. A wee bit of a story that you can basically ignore. It's just a case of it, these forces are acting on a point and they're in a plane, they're called planar, and they're in equilibrium. Equilibrium means there's no movement, there's no net translation in any direction, and there's no rotation about any point. Well, calculate the tensions P and Q. Well, there's no net translation in any direction, there's no net force in any direction, so pick a direction. I suppose your eyes immediately drawn to X and Y because the angles are measured relative to X and Y, so you might as well use them, you would think. Well, take direction X. There's no net movement, there's no translation in direction X, so the net force in direction X must be zero. Now, what's happening that way? Well, P is going that way. Not all of it, just this portion here of it, adjacent to the 30s, that's cos 30 degrees. Q is acting against it, so it's minus Q. Not all of Q, just this part here, which is the cos of 60. This 80 is acting against it, not all of it, just this part of it, the cos of 60. And 64 is not in it at all because it's perpendicular to the direction. So that should come to zero, and that in fact is the first mark for resolving in the direction x. Now I can tidy up these parts, of course. So I could say, well, the cos of 30 is root 3 upon 2. So root 3 upon 2p minus and the cos of 60 is a half, minus a half of q equals, and I'll just bring that across, cos of 60 is a half, and a half of 80 is 40. Now, that doesn't give me either of them straight away, so I've got simultaneous equations. But that's not worth a mark. Now, another direction. Pick another direction. Oh, why not y? Because you can see it, you would think. So, there's no net translation in the y direction. There's no net force in the y direction. So, resolve it in the y direction. Now, what have we got? P and Q are both going that way. So, if we'll just start with P. Not all of P. Just this part of it which is the sine of 30. Q's going that way. Not all of Q, just this part of it. That's the sine of 60. 80's going against it. Not all of it. Just this part of it, which is sine of 60. But all of this one's going against it, so minus 64 equals zero. That's the second mark. But we'll tidy it up, because we know where these little parts come to. The sine of 30 is a half. So a half of P, and that's root 3 upon 2, plus root 3 upon 2Q, minus, that's root 3 upon 2, so that's going to be 40 root 3, but I'll bring it over, so I'll put equals, plus 64 gives me another equation in P and Q. But that doesn't give me a mark. The last two marks are for finding P and Q. Well, we'll just do them in order. If I want to find P, I want to get rid of Q. If I multiply this equation by root 3, since they've got opposite signs, that'll do it. So here we go. If you do root 3 times 1 and add on 2, which always make a statement of how you're arriving at this new equation, then what have you got? Well, root 3 times this would be 3 upon 2, plus another 1 upon 2 is 4 upon 2, which is 2P. They, of course, cancel out. Equals. 40 root 3 plus 40 root 3 is 80 root 3 plus the 64. So finally, P is going to be divided by 2, 40 root 3 plus 32 newtons. So typing that in gives you 101.28 101.28 and so on, or rounding it to three figures, 101 newtons. Now that's a mark. Similarly, to find Q, I'll get rid of P. So to get rid of P, I want root 3 times the second equation, but they've got the same sign. Those have got bigger numbers. So I'll do root 3 of the second one, take away the first one. Root 3 of 2, but take away 1. So obviously, that gets rid of P. And then you've got 
Root 3 times root 3 upon 2 is 3 upon 2. Take away the negative 1 makes it 4 upon 2, so that's 2q. Should equal. Times root 3 means you've got 40 times 3. Take away 40 means you've now just got 40 times 2, so that's 80. And 64 multiplied by the root 3 and take away nothing gives you this. Tidying that up gives you 40 plus 32 root 3 newtons for the exact value. However, if you wish to have it to three figures, that then gives you 95 point, just put it down, 95.425 and so on. So we'll call that 95.4 newtons. That's the last mark. Now, it was a fairly simple old problem for four marks. But it was a wee bit lengthy because of these simultaneous equations. However, you might have noticed, and surely this must have been, but it's not mentioned in the marking scheme, this must have been the point of the question. Look at these angles. 60 and 30. That leaves 90. P and Q are perpendicular to each other. The system's in equilibrium. That means there's no movement in any direction. You can choose any direction at all, so you don't need to choose X and Y. If you choose the direction P, then Q's knocked out and you'll get P straight away. Similarly, if you choose the direction Q, P's at right angles, it gets knocked out and you get Q straight away. So we'll do that. So, let's resolve in the direction of P, because after all, there's no net movement in any direction. That'll do. Of course, that means that Q's knocked out of it, which is handy. So, that should come to zero. So what have we got? In the direction of P, we've obviously got all of P. Now that's not involved because it's at right angles, but these two are. Now there's a wee bit of footer in this because I'm going to now have to figure out what the angles are. I know that 80 is going the wrong way, so it'll be minus 80. But what's the angle going to be? Well, if that's 30, this part's 30, which means that's at 30 degrees to it. So that's going to be cos 30 for this portion adjacent to the angle. The 64 is also pulling the opposite way. And again, if that's 30 and it's a right angle, that means this is now the 64 is 60 degrees off it. So that'll be minus cos 60 should equal zero. So that should be the first mark. Just tidy that up. But I've noticed in tidying up, and I'll take those two over the other side, that evaluates it. Cos of 30 is root 3 upon 2, so it's 80 times root 3 upon 2. That also comes across as plus, plus 64 times, and the cos of 60 is a half. So there we go. Equals 40 root 3 plus 32 newtons as before. Which was, of course, that 101 newtons. Similarly, resolving in the direction of Q should come to zero, because there's no net movement in the direction of Q. Handy because it knocks out P, since that's a right angle. So what have we got acting in that direction? Well, obviously we've got all of Q, but these two are pulling against it, so they'll both be minus. It'll be minus the 80. But what is the angle? Well, this time we'd have to think of the angle from Q. What angle is the 80 acting at to Q? 60, 60 leaves 60. So that's going to be cos 60. Similarly, the 64 is acting against it. If that's 60, that's also 60, so that part's 30. So that'll be 64 cos 30 for this portion of it adjacent to the angle. That should come to zero. That should be a mark, and of course that was a mark there. And of course that gives you Q straight away. Take it across. 80 cos 60 is a half. That also comes across as plus. Cos 30 is root 3 upon 2. So Q is going to be 40 plus, divide by 2, 32 root 3 newtons. Or as before, 95.4 newtons. Now well, it was easier getting the four marks that way. And I would have assumed that that's the way the question was designed because they were perpendicular to each other. You just had that little bit of footeriness trying to figure out these angles, but that only took a little bit of thought. So they are. Question two.